Today, the high yield ETF market is one of the most oversaturated areas in all of investing. With investors pouring into all of these terrible investments such as QYLD and XYLD, which are promising astronomically high dividend yields, all while destroying the underlying value of your portfolio, meaning that if you do hold these funds over the long run, you are going to be losing out on a significant amount of cash as well as destroying the long-term prospects of your portfolio. Now today we are going to be talking about another one of these high yielding dividends, which is HYLD, which is focused on pulling its dividend return from these high yield US corporate bonds. And because the funds for these types of investments are comparatively very risky, you are going to be getting over 6.5% on your monthly dividend return, which may not seem incredibly high when you compare it to some of the other ones like QYLD and XYLD, However, compared to the average dividend market as a whole, this fund is still multiples of what you would be getting with your average dividend yielding stock, such as John Deere or ExxonMobil. So today I want to go through HYLD and break down if this is potentially a good investment to see whether you should potentially invest in it or maybe considering withdrawing your money if you're already holding it in order to be able to potentially maximize your portfolio over a longer time period. So now let's just start off with a general overview of the fund itself. Now, as I previously mentioned, HYLD is focused on holding corporate bond yields and then trading those in order to maximize its monthly dividend returns. Now, this ETF is managed by McHale Shields, which is a specialist investment group that is focused on these dividend equity and corporate bond sectors. And it should be noted that HYLD does appear to be their only current public ETF meaning that this might be their first investment fund. And this is something that is important to take into consideration because it means that we may not be able to accurately predict how strong management is and how they've been able to maintain their funds performance in times of financial crisis or even in something as simple as a bad market environment. Now with that said, the fund is very well diversified as it has over 226 different holdings within it, with the majority of those being heavily focused in corporate bonds. However, there is a few normal bond yields in there as well. And as you should be able to tell by this chart that's up on the screen, they are primarily focused on high risk types of investments. With the immediate credit rating across all of their investments rated at a B, which is pretty far from what I normally recommend as a good type of bond investment, especially if it's from a relatively unknown managing firm. And naturally, this is exactly the way in which they're able to get such a high dividend. As since these bonds are so speculative, there is going to be a risk of a lot of default. But on the upside of this, you are going to have extremely high credit rates, meaning that they are able to maximize the amount of monthly income on these investments. Now, I do want to note that this strategy itself is not inherently bad, as a lot of other really prestigious funds do do a very similar strategy. However, the prominent concern that we should have with HYLD is the relatively unknown performance of their management team. When we do have a strong managing portfolio system in place, there shouldn't be that much of a concern as I would expect the team to be able to set up investments that have very low default rates while maintaining that relatively high yield. However, if you do have a bad team, then they are naturally not going to be able to do as well at picking the proper investments and are likely going to have a significantly higher default rate. This in turn can make the portfolio even more risky than what its credit score at a B is currently suggesting. And when we're starting to get below a B, that is something that is ultra speculative and is definitely not something that you should be looking for in a long-term dividend yield holder. And just to compound upon these concerns a little bit more, if you look at how HYLD is comparing to its peers, it is not performing very favorably towards them on some of the most important metrics, which we are now going to get into. So let's start this off by first getting into more detail about the credit rating strategy of HYLD, which I've already told you has historically averaged a B score. And when we're looking at the market as a whole for these credit bond security investment types, most other funds out there are averaging a double B rating on theirs, which is comparatively higher than what you are seeing here. Now, if we compare this to the industry market, which is going to be iShares iBox investment strategy, we should see that HYLD's comparatively poor credit strategy is going to lead it to more losses over a longer period of time, as well as even more underperformance during downturns, which we could see best demonstrated in quarter one of 2020. Now, in addition to this, HYLD was also underperforming some of the more mainstream funds such as HYG, and this is personally some of my favorite types of investments in this category. So personally, I am definitely not impressed with this underperformance, especially given the higher risks of investments that it's holding. Now, I do want to focus on the dividend yield of this fund, as that is what most investors are drawn towards. So this is something that is absolutely critical, that we get a good conception of what's actually going on here, 
as well as if this is going to be a sustainable type of investment long term. So, so far, HYLD's trailing 12 months dividend yield has sat at 6.4%. And although on paper, this is quite high compared to a lot of other types of dividend investments, this is actually not a very good predictor of how much income you can expect to get generated if you were to invest in this fund today. And this is mostly because these yields and credit spreads have been significantly reduced over the past few months. And this in turn has forced the fund to take a shift in strategy and move towards more lower yielding securities. So if we take a look at HYLD's SEC yield over the past few months, you are going to see that it is significantly lower, sitting at only 4.4%, which is an over 2% drop than what you're going to see most commonly publicized with any lot of articles that are going to be referencing the benefits of investing in HYLD. Now, in addition to this, since HYLD has been forced to take some significant cuts in the last few months, I'm also expecting to see an even more dramatic dividend cut come in the next few months, as it just doesn't seem that the HYLD is going to be able to sustain what it is currently putting out. And this is confirmed if we look at HYLD's dividend growth tracker, as this is something that has also not historically been strong, with there being very frequent dividend cuts since the inception. And naturally, this is a result of the fund's consistent capital losses, and I know that many of you who watch my videos say that you don't care about the capital value of the fund, and that's why you get mad at me when I say negative things about XYLD and QYLD, but if you really do look into the metrics, the ability for the fund to be able to maintain this capital value or more hopefully be able to grow it even if it's a marginal 1% or 2% per year is something that is absolutely critical in order for those dividend yields to be maintained. And that is exactly what we are seeing with HYLD here. Since that capital value has not been able to appreciate since the fund's inception, there's just no possible way that the fund is able to cover what it's paying out in its dividend and that means that in order for the fund to survive, naturally that dividend cut does need to happen. So now speaking of that capital loss, I also wanna take a look at the fund's underlying capital performance, as not only is this going to be critical for that dividend yield to maintain its stability, but despite this factor, if you are planning on holding this fund for any period more than a few years, then you are definitely going to be concerned about that capital value, because even if the fund sat at a hypothetical 5% dividend yield, if you were consistently losing your underlying value, all of that cash that you are making is pretty much worthless because the net money that you are going to be making is going to be significantly lower than whatever that dividend yield looks like on paper. Now, regarding the specific losses that the fund has experienced, this is really something that I believe is a fault of management as over the last few months, we have seen successive funds with the same strategy, seeing massive gains in their portfolio value, as well as being able to raise their dividend in some cases. And this for some reason has not happened with HYLD. So for this reason, I think it is pretty safe to say that the management team is incompetent here when it comes to picking the proper investments in order to not get totally screwed over with the default on those loans. Now, I do not want to place all of the blame on them because clearly it is also somewhat the fault of the companies they are investing in. And since they are in such a high risk area of the market, it shouldn't really be unexpected that the companies that they are picking these investment yields off of are not going to be able to repay their debt. And naturally, this is something that is going to put even more pressure on the fund's margins. The way to best visualize this is if you look at the pure performance of HYLD, where there has been significant underperformance and is definitely not something that looks good on paper, nor is it something that is going to look good in your portfolio. So really the only benefit that I can see that would make HYLD an attractive option for investors is that dividend yield that is super high on paper. However, since you've listened to the rest of this analysis, you're probably aware by now that whatever is written on paper is probably not an accurate reflection of how much money you are going to be making if you were to invest today. So all I can say about this fund is that I don't see any reason for it to be attractive across any metric. What we seem to be dealing with here is a fund that has a poor management team, is not really able to maintain or grow its capital value, and has had serious problems maintaining its dividend yield since its inception. So for those reasons, I do not think HYLD is a good fund. Now, if you disagree with me, let me know down in the comments. And with that said, I will see you in the next one.